right, thanks, Nate. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit this little thing real quick. Okay, cool. Um, so my name is Jesse Jennings, and I'm a content creator here at Plaid. And today we're making a really fun project. We're doing a faux silk screen technique, and we're going to do a really fun little um, tote bag. So it's just a really abstract, cute bag for summer. You can carry around your beach stuff or your pool stuff in it. Um, but it's a really fun technique. There's a million different things you can do using this technique, so I'm excited to show you. Um, so like Nate said, this class is being recorded. So if you're crafting along with me today, that is awesome. I'm so happy you are. Um, but if it's a little bit fast for you, we try to keep it within an hour. So feel free to just watch now. You can go back and craft along with the recording later. So we have Steven here, um, who also is a team member here at Plaid, and he'll be in the chat. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put those in the chat, and he'll read them to me live so that I can answer them for you. And I think I will go ahead and let you guys know what supplies we'll be using today. So as you can see here, um, I've got my tote bag. So you can really do this on any fabric item. So um, just like you would do regular silk screen, if you guys have done that before, or if you know anything about it, um, it works great for any fabrics. Michaels has an awesome selection of all kinds of different like fashion and wearables. So whether it's totes or t-shirts or baseball caps or aprons, I mean, they've got anything you could need. So um, I got this, this is a little bit different than the, uh, the picture, but it's just, it's same size tote. It's just the um, more natural canvas um, color. And then of course, um, I, probably not, of course, you may not know this, but we also have pantyhose today. So this is what we're going to be using to make our silk screen. This is going to be the screen part of it um, that we're going to be making our design with. So I've got some pantyhose um, and we're going to be cutting them up. So make sure it's some, we're going to be painting on them. Make sure it's some that you don't need anymore. Or you can grab some from the dollar store, something like that, but just some pantyhose. I also have a little embroidery hoop. And this is what we'll be using to um, stretch the pantyhose onto, to, again, to make the screen itself that we'll be adding the design to. So make sure you have one of these. Um, it is important. I think I put on the supply list a seven inch hoop, which is the original one I used. As you can see here, I have a smaller one here today. It's just important. Um, it can be smaller than seven inches. You need to be able to make sure that your pantyhose, you know, one leg of your pantyhose will stretch over the entire hoop. So if you're trying to do something much bigger, just keep that in mind. You need to be able to stretch your pantyhose. You don't want to get a larger size or something or something that's a little more uh, stretchy. Um, it needs to be able to fit across the round part of the hoop. So just keep that in mind when you're picking out your embroidery hoop. Um, I also have some Mod Podge today. So in case you didn't know, we are the makers of folk art paint, but we are also the makers of Mod Podge. So our favorite decoupage medium and glue and sealer um, all in one. So today I am using gloss really any of the original formulas will work, matte, satin, or gloss. Um, but I, I use gloss today just because in my opinion, it's a little bit thicker than the others. And you'll see why that's um, helpful when we get to that part of the class. But I have gloss today, but if you've got, like I said, matte or satin is great. Um, and then I also have some folk art multi-surface paints today. So I have a few here. I'm mostly gonna be using um, this one called Ink Spot, which is a really pretty um, navy blue color. It's kind of like this cobalt one that you can see here in the project. Um, and I like to use multi-surface paints whenever I'm working on fabric as opposed to just our regular acrylic paints because um, just like the name, they are designed to work on multiple surfaces. So they just grip a little bit better than the typical acrylic paints, which are more meant for wood, canvas, paper, things like that. These are great for fabric, glass. Um, you can throw this in the washing machine when you're done, which is a great uh, reason to use multi-surface. So that's what I've got today. And then some more miscellaneous stuff. I know we've kind of got a lot today, so please feel free to ask questions as we're going. Um, I've got some water and you know uh, paper towels and a plate for my paints and things. I've got some scissors for um, trimming my pantyhose. I've got a permanent marker, a pencil, and then I've also got some uh, variety of brushes. I've got stencil brushes as well as just flat regular brushes. So. Um, just a few, again, I'll be letting you guys know what we'll be using as we go in case you forget anything or need to grab it during the class, but I just want to give you guys a heads up of what we'll be using. Um, I also have a hairdryer just because I always bring a hairdryer to these classes just to try to keep things moving so we can all craft together. Um, and then I think that's it. You'll just also want to have some sort of design. So we can get into this a little bit more when we get to that part, but I've got some scrap paper for drawing my own design, but you can also use like a printed design or something. Um, but again, we'll get into that uh, when we get more into the crafting portion of this. So don't worry about that for now. All right, I know that was a lot. Are there any questions yet, Steven? Uh, no questions so far, Jesse. I think everyone's just excited to uh, get going. Okay, cool. Um, so let's do just that then. Um, so you can see here, this is the tote that you guys probably saw in the event listing. So just a plain white tote from Michaels. I did these really fun little um, sort of like Matisse inspired uh, designs on it. Just super simple and super fun for summer. 
Uh, but there's so many different ways you can do this. So just like any silk screen, of course, this is kind of a fake one. This is a crafty version of it. You can DIY, but like any silk screen, you can just do it where it's a single layer or you can layer it. So here's an example of another um, piece of fashion that I made using this technique. So this is layered, it's multiple colors with different uh, prints on top of each other. So as we get into it, you'll be able to kind of understand all the different ways you can use this technique. Um, but I just wanted to show you a couple of different examples. So if you wanna stray from this exact pattern at home, I hope you do by all means, I would love to see what you guys are crafting at home. But of course you're welcome to follow my design. Okay, so to get started, I've got my tote. Um, I always like to, I try to pre-wash my um, fabrics whenever I'm gonna paint on them. And the reason you wanna do that is because um, when you buy fabrics or things, you know, like fabrics or totes or things that, that are fabric material at the store, oftentimes they come with sizing, which is what keeps it really nice um, and smooth. But you wanna wash that out because it can help, it can kind of resist the paint as you're painting. And we don't want any resistance. You want nice clean fabric. So that paint really grabs onto the fibers and it never goes away. So I wash it and then I also ironed it just because it makes it easier. Um, it's a nice, a smooth surface. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to build our screen. So like I said, and I also talk fast. So Steven, tell me to slow down if people need me to slow down. It's a bad habit. Okay, so I've got my pantyhose here and I'm just trimming one of the legs off just so I have it more manageable. We just need like a nice big open piece. So I just trimmed the leg here and I'm just gonna lay it on my surface. And then I'm gonna grab my embroidery hoop. And like I said, I have a smaller one today, but any size up until probably, this is probably as big as I would go. This is seven inches up until about this will be fine. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna kind of remove it. I'm gonna take the inside out. So if you guys aren't familiar with embroidery hoops, if you're not into, you know, stitching and things like that, you just wanna, um, you know, lefty loosey righty tighty. You wanna loosen this little bolt right here, this little screw, and then the center will come out. And then when we go to wanna tighten it later, you'll pop it back in and you can turn it to the right to tighten it. So we're loosening it now so that we can stick it in to our pantyhose. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open these up. You can kind of stretch them too, just like if you were gonna be putting them on. If you wear things like this, you can kind of stretch them out to make it a little bit easier for yourself to kind of fit that hoop in, especially if we have a larger one. So I'm gonna slide, this is the in inside of my embroidery hoop. I'm gonna slide this into the pantyhose or stockings or whatever it is you have at home should work. I like the really thin ones though, okay? And then, so now I have it in here. So it's, it's pretty taut, but we want it really tight so we can paint on it more easily. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab one side. You kinda of wanna grab the two sides really. And you wanna really tighten it. So you can see here, so I've got my, my little hoop inside the pantyhose here. I'm gonna grab the two ends and I'm gonna pull so that I can get it really tight. And I'm kind of twisting it too, because I want it to be really taut, like a drum almost, as tight as I can get it. If you can't get it super duper tight, just because this is such a soft material, but I'm kind of twisting it to make sure it's kind of as tight as I can get it. So can you see how there, how it's nice and tight around the hoop? That's kind of what we're looking for. And so I'm Jesse, gonna keep... Before you get too far into that, I have yeah. a question for you. Uh, sure. They asked, if you want to go bigger on the hoop, uh, what material could you use besides pantyhose? That's a really great question. Um, you know, you want it to be like a really soft mesh. So I'm sure you could find something at the fat. If your Michaels carries fabrics, which most of them do now, there's probably some sort of material. Um, you just want to make sure that it's elastic so that you can stretch it onto your hoop and that it's sheer, that you have this like net, like, like netting sort of material. Um, so that's why I like pantyhose. You also probably, if you needed to, I'll kind of show you, you probably could, um, uh, here, I'll, I'll show you really quick. I, this would be harder, but it's probably possible. You probably could cut one of the legs of the pantyhose open instead of leaving it intact, just to have like a wider section to wrap on your hoop, if that makes sense, because it'll have a bigger surface area. It just might be more difficult to stretch and like try to get as tight as you can. It might take a little bit more finagling, if that makes sense. But um, but yeah, there's definitely ways around it. You definitely could use a larger hoop. You really put you your mind that, to it. Do you think that you could use cheesecloth? I, I, my instinct is that cheesecloth would probably be too thick. I don't know if the paint would, you really need the paint to go through it so you get this nice, as crisp of a print as you can. But if you have cheesecloth and an embroidery hoop at home and you're gonna try it, we would love to see it. So hashtag plaidcraft, because I'm actually kind of curious now to know if cheesecloth would work. Um, but yeah, great idea. Okay, 
So I have my um, pantyhose on my hoop here and I've got it as tight as I can. You can see I kind of started twisting it because I want it to get really tight. So I'm gonna hold it with my hand because I don't want that to go anywhere. And I'm gonna put the larger hoop over it. I'm gonna slide it back in and now we're gonna tighten it. You want it to get as tight as it can because you don't want that to go anywhere. So I'm just holding it still, holding it tight and I'm tightening it with my other hand and I wanna keep going until I can't tighten it anymore so that it's super snug so that we don't want the, the mesh to slip out. Just get it super duper tight. Until you really just can't twist it anymore. Okay. Still going. Okay. So now what you can do, now it's nice and tight. You want to make sure it's not going to slip out. You want to make sure it's super duper, super duper snug in there. I'm just turning it even more. So it's really, really, really in there because I don't want it to slip. Okay. So now what you can do is you want to make sure not to touch this side. This is the smooth side where we're going to be putting our pattern, but you want to cut off the other side where it has all the excess where we were doing that twisting. So be very careful because you don't want to cut through to the other side. You just want to cut off the one side. So I'm just gonna really like slowly and carefully trim because I wanna make sure I, I don't puncture that other side because that's the side that we need for this. So I'm gonna cut all around and you wanna see, I'm gonna leave some excess here because if you cut it too close, it might wanna try to slip back through um, your embroidery hoop. So you wanna make sure to leave some excess around the edges. You don't wanna cut it too close to the edge. Okay, so make sure it's nice and tight. And if you're having trouble, if it's just like really wanting to slip through, like you can see my embroidery hoop isn't really perfect. Looks like this one's kind of been around the block. So there's a little bit of a gap. So my pantyhose keep wanting to slip through. That's okay. If you have a hot glue gun, um, I would go ahead and just kind of like dab some hot glue around the edge to keep that the pantyhose from going anywhere. You just wanna make sure it's nice and tight in there. See so yeah, how this one's kind of wanting to just slip a little bit but that's okay. I'll just use this one for my example. So you guys get the idea. You want to make sure you don't go too close to the edge and that's why you want it really tight. You don't want that slipping right back out. So this is what you should have right now. So this is going to be our screen. It's our faux silk screen, our DIY silk screen. Okay, so now I'm going to set that aside. Um, and it depends on what kind of pattern you want to put onto your bag or what, your t-shirt, whatever it is you're making. So of course, in this original one, I just hand drew this one, just something really fun and abstract and funky for summertime. Um, but you can print things out online too. So you can grab words, which is really fun. You can use that, whatever fits inside your embroidery hoop. You could do a sun, like I showed you guys in the beginning of the class on that t-shirt that fits inside there. You could even try to do more detailed things. This, you might wanna blow up a little bit more, but there's so much fun art you can you know, find online or buy online. Um, to put onto um, pieces of fashion for summer. So lots of different options, but like I said, you can also hand draw it like I'm gonna do um, right now. So I'm gonna lay some paper here and I'm gonna grab a pencil and I'm just gonna quickly go around my hoop just so I know um, how big I want my design to be. I don't want it to be any bigger than, than my embroidery hoop. So that'll just give me a good idea. Okay, so I've got my circle here. I'll make it a little darker so you guys can see. So you can do, you know, funky abstract designs, or like I said, print out your name or a monogram. You can really do anything. You can do something really fun and layered. Like I showed you guys this one here before, but I'm gonna follow the original design we had. So I'm gonna do some funky flowers and I'm just hand drawing it. You can see, I'm just kind of trying to use my imagination, um, but I just did a little funky, you know, leaf sort of shape there. Um, I'll do a couple more. Doing there. How's everybody doing in the chat, Stephen? Good. Uh, Nayara said that they're having so many ideas and that leopard print would be so gorgeous. Ooh, I love that idea. Leopard print. You could even do like two silk screens and, and layer it up and do a couple of colors. That is an awesome idea. Yeah, that'd be that great. That's going to be cute. Yeah. Okay. So you can see, super simple. I just, again, I'm trying to kind of follow my original design that we that was in the um, event listing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer this onto our 
our faux silk screen that we made. So this is where you want to grab a permanent marker. And I'm going to go ahead, I just have a Sharpie here. I'm going to outline my design just so it's easier to see. Um, I can probably see it fine, but just to make sure it's easier to see through the pantyhose. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to outline my design. You know, I'm not going to do it on there in case it bleeds through. Just so I can see it better. Okay. So now I'm going to lay this on top. And again, if you guys are having what's happening like me, there, mine has a little gap there because this inverter hoop is kind of old. Feel free to just you know stretch it out and put some hot glue there and that'll hold it all nice and taut. Okay, so I'm gonna lay it on top. And if you feel like you wanna grab some tape, if you're if you've got like a really you know detailed design or something and you're afraid of it sliding around, you can just go ahead and kind of tape it down if that's helpful to you. But I still have my Sharpie, my whatever kind of permanent marker. And I'm going to, I've got it face down. So you can see the flat side is down. It's, it's flush against my paper. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to gently outline my design. You don't wanna press down too hard because you don't want the fibers of your permanent marker to tug on the, um, on the mesh because that could you know, kind of skew your design. So you don't wanna press down too hard, just hard enough where you're making a nice um, line that you'll be able to follow later on. You should make sure you're, you're getting that line on there. Okay, so you can see hopefully on camera that I have my design there now onto my DIY silk screen. So you can see if you're doing like that love like I held up earlier, you would just outline it no matter what. Um, and the great thing about this is unlike a stencil, which we love stencils here, but unlike that, there's not gonna be any bridges or anything. You're gonna get whatever design you want. There's not gonna be you know pieces of stencil that's having to hold it together like that oh if it was a stencil there'd be like paper pieces holding it holding the center in place you're not going to have that with the silk screen you're going to have a perfectly crisp design just how you want it which is great okay so i'm going to grab a plate because this next part is going to get a little bit messy so grab some wax paper or you know paper or you know whatever you like to craft on to keep your space clean um, but i've got a paper plate here because we're going to start painting on the mod podge so here's my design. I'm gonna flip it back over. So I have the smooth side facing up now. So this side with the excess pantyhose is down, the smooth side is up. And I'm gonna grab some again of my Mod Podge gloss. And this is when I was talking earlier about how you'll see why if it's a little bit thicker, it may just make your life a little bit easier for this part. I'm gonna grab a little flat brush. So just whatever, you know, depending on your design, just a little regular paint brush. And I'm gonna start painting onto the mesh around my design. So the only space open on your faux silk screen should be where your design is. Because if you think about it, when the Mod Podge dries, when we go to put paint on it later, it's only gonna go through where the Mod Podge isn't. The Mod Podge is gonna act as a resist almost. It's gonna be a barrier so the paint can't get through that mesh. So I'm gonna start painting my Mod Podge on all around my design. And this part might take a little bit of patience because of course we're painting on mesh. So I'm just kind of doing a little bit as I go because it's going to want to go right through the mesh, of course, because it's completely see-through and that's why we're using it. But it may take a little bit of patience just kind of getting that Mod Podge um, where you want it so it doesn't completely just soak through the mesh. And it may take a couple of coats too, but I'll just spend a minute doing this just so, so you guys get a good idea of how this should work. Jesse, Gail says that paw prints would be cute. And I just want to say that I agree. And I think that would be great for a bag where you put all your uh, dog park supplies, all your treats. I love that clothes. idea. You probably yeah. could even get like your dog's uh, paw prints if you use like a, a, pet a pet friendly paint and got their paw print. You could transfer that onto a silk screen and do a really cute paw print pattern of your, your actual pet's prints. So that'd be adorable. Yeah, I love that idea. That is awesome. I love different ways to customize this. Okay, so you can see here, this again, just takes a little bit of patience. Um, and sometimes when I'm doing this, if I have like a larger design and it's gonna dry by the time I go around, of course, Mod Podge always dries clear. So if it's tricky for you to see where you've already applied Mod Podge, sometimes I'll pour some out and I'll put a little bit of paint in it, just a dab, just tint the Mod Podge because then I can see where it is better on my design and I just know where I've already painted and where I haven't. Do you think that Mod, uh, Mod Podge Ultra would work? 
Um, that was a great question, actually. I don't think so. I think you're better off with the classic Mod Podge. Um, if you guys haven't used Mod Podge Ultra, it is a really amazing product in the Mod Podge family. It is a spray sealer. So it's a crazy, crazy good adhesive. You'd be surprised some of the things it can glue together, but um, it is a spray formula. So it's a little bit thin and that's why it goes through the spray pump so well. Um, but I think that it might be a little bit thin for what we're doing here. I think what you really need is that thick, creamy Mod Podge so it stays right on the mesh where you want it. That's a great question. Okay, so you'd want to go all the way around, guys. You want to keep going. Again, like I said, it takes a little bit of patience and it might take a couple of coats too. You can kind of hold it up and see later. You know, it'll take a little while to dry too because we're we're getting it on there kind of thick so that it goes through the mesh. I keep flipping it back and forth to kind of spread out the excess that is going right through that mesh. You can kind of see too, it's gonna to be hard to see on camera, but if, when you do it in real life, you can see where there's little areas that have kind of, that are kind of open and the Mod Podge um, hasn't really filled in that area of the fibers. You just wanna make sure that you have it all completely covered. If you have any gaps, um, when we go to add the paint later, it's just gonna go straight through and there's gonna be paint there, maybe where you don't want it. So you wanna make sure you cover all of the areas where you don't want paint, all the areas that aren't part of your design. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this for another minute or two. And then I have this other one here to show you how to use it, just so we don't have to wait here um, too long for it to be dry, because it will take a minute. And you can hit it with the hair dryer too. And I'm just going all around my designs. Okay. So again, we just keep doing that. I'm not gonna finish it for now, but oops. You can see here how we were going all around our designs um, and you'd wanna fill that all in, going right straight up to the edge, all around the designs, wherever you don't want paint to go on your projects later. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause that for now. We can finish this one later. Um, but I'm gonna use the one I made originally um, when I made the project for the event listing for the class today. Um, and it will also show you guys, kind of demonstrate to you that you can use this over and over and over. So once you've made something really fun, like say you make a monogram or something, you can monogram everything. You can make t-shirts with your monogram and bags and you know makeup bags or backpacks, whatever it is you want to um, add your design to. So this one, like I said, this is the exact one that I used to make this bag here, um, but you can see that it's still see-through. You can still see through the design and that means that paint's gonna go through it as well. So we can use this um, many, many times over. And I move this bag out of the way so I don't mess them up lay down my tote um, and it also means that you can repeat your design which is great you saw first, so you can do a big pattern you could just do one centralized you know design if you wanted to but you can also repeat it all over something like this and get a you know a, a repeating pattern which is really fun too so jesse if you uh needed to change color would you have to wash the stencil that is a great question um so i probably wouldn't wash it I would say since the paint doesn't really clog up the mesh um, of the pantyhose, I would go ahead and dry it between colors. So maybe we'll do a different color today just to kind of show you guys how that would work. So this one's totally dry. Of course, this has been, this was a, several weeks ago that I used this one. Um, I would be afraid that if you went and tried to rinse this off in the sink, it's just very delicate. A, it would just kind of, it might just think with a pantyhose, it might fall out of the embroidery hoop or the Mod Podge might kind of reactivate. Um, I would just say, yeah, I'd say it's better not to rinse this one, but yeah, you can totally change colors. Just make sure this one's fully dry before you switch, but that's a great idea. We're going to go ahead and do a different color today. We'll do pink melon today because why not? Um, okay, so I've got a paper plate here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my paint on. This is just another multi-surface color. I've got several here. So any of our folk art multi-surface paints are great for this. This is a really pretty pink uh, color for summer. So I'm going to start up here maybe. And I'm going to grab a stencil brush. So if you guys aren't familiar with stencil brushes, um, uh, I don't think Michaels has the exact one. This is a plaid stencil brush, but Michaels has tons of stencil brushes to choose from. So um, this is normally what you would use, just like the title for stencils. Um, but what's great about it is that it's built to go in kind of a pouncing motion as opposed to a brushing motion like most uh, you know regular paint brushes do. And that's going to be great for um, the way we're going to be applying paint to this, which you'll you'll see in just a second. So I'm going to grab my stencil brush and I'm going to pick up some paint 
and that's a lot of paint on there. So I'm going to wipe off some of it. And this is actually, uh, there's a name for this. It's called offloading. So you ever hear that if you pick up paint and then you wipe some of it off, so you just have less of that paint on your brush, that's called offloading. So if you ever hear that in one of our classes, that's what we mean. So I offloaded my brush. So there's just way less paint on there. I don't want it to be tons of paint. So I've got my, don't forget, you want the flat side down. You want it to be touching your surface. You don't want it to be the flat side up because there's going to be a big gap. You want it to be flat side down. And I've got my brush uh, loaded up and I'm going to start doing a pouncing motion. And I'm going to focus, of course, where my design is. If it gets around your design, it doesn't matter because we put that Mod Podge on there and that's going to protect it. But you do want to try to just focus on where your design is. Jesse, uh, will this paint bleed through the fabric at all? Oh, that's a great question. So um, you guys are, you're, whoever asked that is probably used to like painting on totes and t-shirts and things like that. Um, yeah, it's always a great idea. I should, probably should have said that to stick like a paper or like a poster board or wax paper in between if you're doing a t-shirt or something that's two-sided like this, just to keep any paint from going through to the back. So that's a great idea. That's, that's a really good recommendation. If you're doing this, especially if you're planning on using a lot of paint, which you made today, go ahead and stick something in between to protect those two layers. So I'm going up and down, I'm adding more paint as I go, but I don't want too much paint. So you can see I continue to offload onto my plate and I'm doing a pouncing motion. I'm, I'm pouncing down on it. And what's happening when you're doing the pouncing motion is that it's kind of like forcing the paint through the screen. If you do a, br a brushing up and down kind of deal, it might not, you know, um, encourage the paint to push through that netting, which is what we want. But since we're pouncing it, it's, it's the bristles are really just shoving the paint through there onto our project, which is what we want. So Jesse, since you're talking about um, using the stencil brush, if you mm -hmm. didn't have one of those, could you uh, make it work with a foam brush or a sponge? Oh yeah, a foam brush actually probably would work really well. Um, I would just make sure you don't get the brush too saturated in paint. I think when people are using foam brushes, that's part of the problem. It, it kind of ends up messier than they'd like it to because your your the foam just gets so saturated. It's like a sponge. It is a sponge in paint um, that it just it, it makes it messy. So just kind of like wring out your, you know, kind of like squeeze the foam brush with a napkin every once in a while, get some of that excess paint out because you just don't want to have all that paint in there. It's just hard to control where it's going on your project. Uh, but yeah, a regular brush would work great too. So I have a regular flat brush here. So you could kind of load it up the same way. You just want to make sure you do that pouncing motion. The only difference is that for a regular flat brush, um, it's not meant to do this pouncing motion. So it may take a couple of coats and um, it's just not going to be as much surface area covered at once. So, but you can definitely use this if this is what you have at home. I just prefer the um, stencil brush. I'm going to go all over my design. You just want to make sure you're not letting it slide around. Um, you can always, you know, put some tape down on it again to kind of tape the edges to your surface to make sure it doesn't slip and slide. But as you can see, I'm just holding it with my hand. And Jesse, since you're putting a different color on top of that blue, um, mm -hmm. is there a situation where the original paint would leak through when you're applying the other uh, color? It, it should not. The only time that will happen is if your first color is still wet. That's why I said earlier, somebody had asked, could you change colors? And you absolutely can. Just want to make sure that first color is totally dry. Because the great thing about acrylic paint is that it is permanent. It basically turns to like a plastic when it dries. So it's not coming off, which is why you don't want to get it on your clothes or things like that, because it will be on there forever, especially multi-surface paint. So once you have it dried onto your um, DIY silk screen, it should not go anywhere. So that's why you can go ahead and add a second color. But again, once it's fully dry. So let's see, hopefully we have a nice reveal here. So look how cute guys, we have the exact pattern that we want. And now we can just keep continuing this all around our tote bags. So we can kind of want to be careful where it's wet. You kind of don't want to overlap that right away. You can go back later, of course, but you can just continue doing this pattern all over and have a perfect repeat pattern. So I'm just going to keep going with this and show you guys what it would be like to do it a second time while it's still a little bit wet. It'll still work. And you can see too, guys, none of the blue came through because this, um, my DIY silver screen that I used for the other tote was perfectly dry, but also it, it was still pretty crisp. So that's really nice too. It, for whatever reason, it doesn't want to, the paint doesn't dry too much in the um, in the screen itself. So it's really easy to reuse. I 
can't wait to see if you guys decide to do this. So as always, if you decide to make whatever we're making today or any fun projects using our plaid products, um, make sure to hashtag plaid crafts. We love, love, love to see you guys are making. Um, also hashtag make it with Michaels and Michaels classes because let me get to see all the fun things that Michaels is inspiring you guys to do. But we love seeing what you're doing with our products. We get inspired by you know, you guys all the time. We get so many great ideas from you guys on Instagram and, um, you know, Pinterest and Facebook. So make sure to hashtag us so we can see what you guys are up to. Okay, I think I got everywhere on this one. I did it much quicker. There you go, another great print. So you can see, you can just keep going over and over and over again. Um, you do the front and the back and even the handles if you wanted to. But what you end up with is this super duper cute tote um, and you can add little embellishments. You can see I added my little my little pom poms to this one just to make it really fun for summer. But um, again, you can throw this in the washer and dryer. Um, I do recommend whenever you're using um, folk art multi-service paint, you want to heat set it. So um, the way you do that is you can either do it the easy way and toss it in a low uh, heat dryer and just let it tumble for about 20 minutes or so. That will heat set the paint. Um, or you can take it and you can turn it inside out and do um, a dry iron on it. And that will also heat up the paint. So that way, when you go to put it into your washing machine, it is totally permanent and it'll be super washable. So like I said, great for summer, great for vacation, just throw it in the wash, great for school, back to school is coming up. So um, teacher bags, student bags, you know, they get super dirty with your books in it. Go ahead and toss it in the washer and dryer anytime you want. And this paint will not go away at all. It won't bleed. It won't um, chip or flake. Um, it is an awesome paint to use for that. So um, Jessica, any more somebody, questions? Yeah, yeah, somebody asked if you could talk a little bit about how you did the sun pattern on the t-shirt. Um, they said they oh, saw sure. some horizontal white spaces inside the sun. Yeah, definitely. I'd love to. So I wish I had that silk screen. I don't think I saved it. I should have. Um, but so this one here, this is actually a TikTok. Did we put that TikTok out yet, Steven? Do you know? I think we did, yeah. I think we did, yeah. So if you guys didn't know, um, if you are on TikTok, Plaid has a, a TikTok channel. So Plaid Crafts. Um, we also have one for Apple Barrel, one of our other paints, and we have a Mod Podge one. So we are always doing really fun projects in there. And this is actually one I made for TikTok. So it is the exact same way that I made these. I'll grab this original one as an example to show you. So if you can kind of like in your mind, just ignore the white sun part. This background was an embroidery hoop. And then I painted Mod Podge lines across it. So that's why you don't see any paint there. And then I just used different paint colors when I went to add paint to my uh, DIY silk screen. So I did like a peach and pinks and reds all the way down this burgundy. But those lines there were where I put the Mod Podge on that one. So it was a circle with the lines and that's that. And then I let it dry. And then I used, I showed you guys this earlier, just something I found online, a little sun. And I made another uh, DIY silk screen. And then I did that one right on top with white. And I have this really pretty layered t-shirt, which is really fun. And it really looks like a real silk screen, which is awesome. And it's low budget, super easy, super DIY, um, and a lot of fun. And could you uh, just go over real quick um, how the, the the drying process and ironing, um, yes. heat setting, all that? Absolutely. I would love to. So what I am going to do with this tote, I will finish it up and then I will let it dry. And what you can do here, I'll show you on this one. What I would do, I'll literally act it out for you guys. You can either just throw it into the um, dryer for just like low heat for 20 minutes and just let it get hot. And that's how it heat sets. Or another easy way is to just flip it inside out. I would just grab it and turn it inside out just like this. And you can even put a towel on top of it just to be like extra super safe. But I'll put it on my ironing board and you wanna have um, low heat and you wanna have no steam. So you wanna dry iron. And I would just press this whole thing and make sure I press wherever there's paint and that will also heat set it. So then I can just throw it into the washing machine and it'll be totally permanent. The washing machine won't have any effect on it. Awesome. But yeah. And somebody um, did ask what kind of mesh we used for the embroidery hoop and that was pantyhose. Yep, just some cheap pantyhose. Steven picked these up today at lunch. <laughs> Steven's <laughs> awesome team member. We were like, Steven, we don't have pantyhose for the Michaels class. So he went and grabbed these for us at Walgreens. So dollar store. I'm sure you guys have some old ones around at home. Um, so yeah, any pantyhose will work. And can you talk a, a, just a little bit about um, how the multi-purpose uh, multi -purpose paint is different from the regular acrylic and the matte acrylic? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so that's a great point that you said matte acrylic. So um, our regular folk art acrylic paints do have a matte sheen when they're dry. They're totally matte. 
our multi-surface paints have a satin sheen when they're finished. So they're slightly glossy, a little bit shinier than the matte ones. Um, but also while most acrylic paints are permanent, they're considered permanent. If you got it on fabric or something, it really wouldn't go away. Um, but the multi-surface paints are super permanent. They also, they work really great on fabric. They also work on glass and really slick surfaces, which the acrylic paints, just the regular folk art acrylic paints don't work as well on slick surfaces. So both acrylic paints, just one is better for, um, you know, kind of like the more exotic surfaces. I don't know if, that, if you could say that, but the regular acrylics are great for like paper, canvas, wood, really absorbent things like that. Um, another great thing about this is that it's uh, safe in the washing machine. So our regular acrylic paint has a chance of washing off in the wash, um, while this one will not wash off in the wash. And also it's slightly more flexible. So the um, matte regular acrylic paints tend to be a little more brittle. They're not just as flexible as these. These are super flexible. You could bend it and pinch it and do all kinds of stuff and it won't like crack or um, flake or anything like that. So that's why I always like to use the multi-surface when I'm painting on fabric. Awesome, yeah. And uh, somebody else asked what the name of the Mod Podge we used today was and that's Mod Podge Gloss. Yep, Mod Podge Gloss. Um, and like I said, if you have a different Mod Podge at home, I do recommend using one of the original formulas, which is matte, satin, or gloss. Um, it's just in my opinion, the gloss is like a little bit thicker than the other two, which you can see why when we were painting onto our silk screen, how you kind of want it to stay where it is. So that's why being a little bit thicker is a little bit helpful for this um, specific technique. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, guys, I really hope you had fun doing this DIY uh, silk screen tote with me today. I had a blast teaching it to you. Um, so like I said earlier, if you decide to make this project or decide to use this technique, we would love to see it. Make sure to hashtag plaid crafts um, and also hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag Michaels classes so we can see what you're doing. Um, we are doing all kinds of fun stuff with Michaels this summer. We're doing some back to school classes coming up. Um, and then we're already even thinking about pumpkin classes for the fall. So we'll be here through the end of the year. Make sure to check those out. Um, every Monday night, we do a really fun class called um, Paint Night Live. We teach you a really fun, super easy, beginner-friendly painting in just about an hour. So those are Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So we hope to see you guys there. It's a really popular class and we always have lots of fun. Um, and if there's no more questions, I'm gonna go ahead and, and say goodbye to you guys and see you next time. Bye. Bye.